So tell me, do you have lilacs where you live? Because I used to have them where I grew up on the east coast of the United States, but here on the west coast, I haven't had access to any until recently. Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. And welcome back to Lake Stickney Park. I was here last week just touring around looking to see what kinds of hidden color treasures there may be in this forest and decided to sample some fern to see what it might bring to my dye pot. Today on Color Quest, I returned because last week, if you saw in my video, I stumbled across lilac right smack dab in the middle of this forest. So I got really curious, did a little research and found out that lilac is a treasure in the dye pot. So let's go pick some lilac and take it back home to see what we can find for natural color from this incredibly fragrant spring bloom. Now, as with so many plants out there in nature, the color that you might expect from a plant is not necessarily the color it gives, and the places in which you find color in a plant may be different than you expect. Lilac is one of those. I actually learned that lilac can produce colors from the flower, the leaves, and the bark. So, just like so many other plants that have them hidden in those unexpected places, lilac's doing the same. And guess what? I don't think I'm gonna be getting lilac from lilac. So let's harvest some of each, take it back, and yeah, I'm kind of excited. It's obviously just a very seasonal plant, at least from a flower perspective. Although if you know where they are, you can always be grabbing leaves and bark throughout the year. But I'm lucky enough to have a few blooms here and I think they may bring me some green. I don't know. Let's harvest and go see. Here we are. A few blooms left and there's some more down there. I do have to make my way through a bunch of bramble to get to it. But when you find a new color to try out from a plant, it's worth a few prickers to get to the good stuff. I wasn't able to get down lower, it's just too much underbrush, but I was able to get plenty of sticks and leaves and flowers. Interestingly enough, I noticed here that there's a tree that was probably chopped down and I followed the line of tree. And in fact, it landed straight on the lilac bush so some of the lilacs on that side can't get to that some of it's on this side can get to that it's still thriving and kind of cool to notice these kinds of things you wouldn't probably notice them otherwise unless you're foraging one thing i did really notice however is how incredibly loud <laughs> this forested area is you can hear the plane overhead and the noise from the street, which is not that far away, and not exactly peaceful, quiet foraging, but still nice to have a little bit of green space nearby. So I've got enough of each one of those three parts, and I'm looking forward to making three different dye pots. I'm thinking I might only dye silk, I have a feeling that protein fibers are gonna respond better to these colors. Don't know, maybe I'll throw in a few bits of cotton, but knowing what I do know a little bit, particularly about fragrant and beautifully colored flowers, they are rarely light and color fast. So using protein fibers 
could be a way to extend it. And of course, I will be doing a pre-mortem treatment on whatever I do for these. So let's go get these soaking. I'm also going to be really careful of the temperature, particularly on the flowers. These flowers are set of a pinkish lilac color. Haha, uh -huh, makes sense. And I know that those sort of blues, purples, and so forth are super sensitive to heat. So we'll keep our heat really, really low and maybe just let them soak. A good overnight soak. Let's see what we can get. Smells so good. This alone is going to be worth making a dye pot of this flower. Yum. So I've cut the blooms off and put those in a pot of water. I'm going to be extremely careful with the heat. I'm only going to put it on the lowest setting and let it very gently heat. I don't want to spoil any color that may be in those blooms. Now I'm going to strip off the leaves from the stems themselves and put those into two different pots and see what colors we're going to get. I didn't end up with quite as many sticks or branches as I thought I would. It's a very sort of, I don't know, lanky bush, but I'm gonna use what I have and I'm gonna cut them into smaller pieces just like I did with the leaves. We always wanna take our dye matter into a smaller form if possible, you know, one inch to three inches so that there's a little bit more surface area to allow color to be extracted if it's going to come out. So just a good rule of thumb, habit to get into. So I'll take these sticks and I'll chop them up into a little bit smaller pieces. And since I'm not dying that much, just enough to be able to do a few sample pieces, I'm not overly concerned about having a smaller volume. You could easily fill half of a dye pot with this kind of dye matter because it's quite light and I don't know the strength of the dye so if I'm going on a one-to-one -one ratio with weight of fabric to dye matter I'd have to have quite a few sticks in there so since I'm just barely dyeing some swatches it'll be enough to see what kind of color comes from it also with a lot of dye matter that's quite tough like bark seeds or pine cones things like that it's great to be able to cut them up simmer them for a couple of hours and then let them just sit in the dye pot you can also let them sit in the dye pot just in cool water prior to heating them to loosen them up a bit so allowing time for the color to slowly emerge from these kinds of dye matters is a great thing to do. It is definitely a slower process, but one that you will be grateful that you did because the longer that it slowly sits in both warm and cool water, the more color you may get. I'm not thinking green's coming from this dye. Don't know. Doubting it's gonna be green. You never know though. You never know until you put the fiber in. Let's see what we get. So I'm putting 
the two, these were the leaves, and these were the flowers next to each other. They're definitely a different color. They both still have a kind of orange hue to them. I'll just kind of lift this up. So that's the lilac leaf. And this is the lilac flower. I've got the sticks, branches just starting. They've been soaking for a day. Just kind of loosen them up. Branches always take a little bit more effort, a little bit more time. So we'll let these heat for a while, actually. And you can see from the steam, it's pretty high heat. Got on full blast. I'm going to turn it down here in a minute. Just wanted to raise the temperature a bit. So I think I'll actually turn it on to the smaller burner. And then probably going to let that simmer for like, I don't know, many hours. And then I'm going to let this sit for a day or two before I actually dye something. So once again, a surprise from a foraging trip turns into a beautiful and varied palette of neutral colors and I got green, <laughs> totally unexpected. I had read that I might get green from the lilac flower, but I actually got it from the leaves. Now I don't know if I have any remnants going on in my pot with some iron. I thought maybe there might have been a little bit of iron residue in my pot that helped that green come through. Don't know, but I'm going to take it happily. Green from leaves it seems just too simple, but I'm was <laughs> super excited as you know, because finding green in nature is not that easy. Working on this reminded me somewhat of working with a thing like Rebecca, where I separated out the flowers and the stems and got different colors. So it's just a great reminder that you can get different colors from different parts of plants. Not all of them, but it's always worth thinking about. And I love the fact that you have hidden color in things like branches. I noticed that the color between the branches and the flowers was not that different. Definitely the branches that I used were quite young. And perhaps if I was able to take some downed branches that were a little bit older, maybe I would have gotten a darker brown, don't know. I let those stew for quite some time. But you know what? I'm super happy. And again, protein fibers are going to meld with those natural colors. So we got some pretty dark colors with the different silks that I used. Always good to know, don't give up on cotton, but cotton mixed with natural color will do better for you if you do some kind of a pre-treatment in terms of a mordant. Now, it's been gray hair for a really long time. We've had one of the wettest springs, I think, in decades here. So next week on Color Quest, I want to take you on a little trip. I need some sun and we're going to head south. We're going to go back to the central coast of California. 
where I have a property and some family, my daughters. So join me as I do a little foraging along the Central Coast with a common invasive plant used for soil retention that can provide a wonderful dye color and that is ice plant. Now I'm gonna go because I don't know if you can tell I'm fogging up here. It is wet and humid. <laughs> it will be great to be in the California sun. Have a wonderful week. Look forward to you joining me next Friday on Color Quest. But you know what? I'm going to take it. I'm going to wait for that very loud car to go by too.